Hi guys, good morning. Welcome. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining in. Great. Uh, let's get started. We started our recording. We completed a worship ministry in the local church, the organizational aspect last, in the last classes. Uh, last week, that is chapter four. We move now to the fifth chapter, which is the spiritual aspects of the worship ministry. Okay, um, but I hope you guys are doing well and uh, ready to learn just a little bit more about worship ministry and the spiritual aspects of it. Okay, uh, am I audible enough? It, um, so one of the spiritual requirements of a worship team member in a local church is uh, that uh, the the basic requirement that they are to be worshippers on stage and off stage. Uh, but uh, and it, look, I have been in worship ministry for almost close to two decades now, uh, being part of the various worship teams and um, helping various worship ministries uh, in their journey in worship, um, learning about worship, eventually later on teaching about worship. Uh, but what I have observed, at least in, uh, in, the, in the place that I come from, uh, people in the worship team are not known to be worshipers off stage. Um, and that is a very uh, sad reality. Oh, okay, I, I, I don't have to make this up, but I'm just sharing what I have learned, what I have observed, is that worshippers or people who are in the worship team are very different on stage and off stage. Um, of course, this is not all of them, um, but the reputation of worship team members are such as this. That okay after the worship team uh, after the worship session is done, uh, you know they will not sit for the sermon. They don't feel uh, they feel entitled to be served after the worship session is done, and um, they will probably take a walk outside for breakfast, uh, you know, and then come back if necessary. If the pastor asks, um, you know, I mean it's understandable when. When, if a team is coming in very early without having their breakfast or whatnot, so you, you plan accordingly in a way that how they can be served breakfast uh, at the same time be able to listen to the sermon. But I'm talking about the attitude of in of the manner how they carry themselves, right? So um, there is we, we in the recent classes we spoke about the differences between a, a local church worship team and a band, isn't it? Uh, and it is possible that we can have a mentality of a band, a member of a band that is, um, and uh, have this spirit of entitlement saying that I deserve this. I don't need to sit for this. Once my role is done singing on the worship team, I can do whatever I want to do after the 30 minutes. I don't have to sit. I can treat people very differently. I can be a very different person on stage saying, oh, Jesus, 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 I love you, love you, love you, and then off, off stage, uh, not really care about the congregation, right? So, but one of the things what we emphasize is that um, we need to emphasize is, uh, is to live a lifestyle of worship both on and off stage. The lifestyle off stage is very, very important uh, than what you do for 30, 40 minutes on stage. The 30, 40 minutes, what happens on stage can probably be like the 0.40% uh, of uh, of the whole entire worship ministry. Right, so that's very important. Um, so there are three areas of responsibility that uh, in order to live a lifestyle of worship, in order to be a worshiper on stage and off stage, uh, there are three areas of responsibility um, slash accountability that one needs to take on. Right? If 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 a, if an individual is serious about growing as a worshiper, 
Okay, and the first one is a personal life and testimony. Uh, remember, we are talking about the spiritual aspects of the worship ministry now. We have moved from the organizational aspect, which is again very important, but we are now in the spiritual aspect of worship ministry. So a personal life and testimony, uh, what, what would that mean? It simply is talking about your, your walk with God. How is it? Right? Um, that's need, that needs to be in check. Okay, uh, that needs to be in check with uh, any area of worship or if you are not involved with full-time worship or part-time worship, that, that doesn't matter if you're a Christian, uh, this matters, this point matters. It begins there. The foundation of a Christian life is that your personal, is about your personal life and testimony. And then now, you know, we're talking about in context of worship ministry, so we link it to that. Right, uh, so we need to realize that uh, you know your personal walk with God, uh, and and combining that with the skills that He has given, uh, and by His grace and His mercy, is what qualifies us as a worship team a member or, or be part of this worship ministry, so to speak. Okay, so uh, we need to strive uh, for to live a life of holiness, to live a life of consecration. Right. Um, you know, uh, Joshua chapter 3, verse 5. Joshua chapter 3, verse 5, it says, Consecrate yourself, so tomorrow God will work among you, or tomorrow God will do wonders among you. So in other words, uh, Joshua, in Joshua chapter 3, verse 5, he's saying, you consecrate yourself today, and so tomorrow God can do wonders, uh, you know, in and through you. And so as a Christian, if we consecrate, if we, if we Strive to live a consecrated life, a life of holiness, a life that is set apart for God. Um, and tomorrow he will work and move in us and through us. Okay. And uh, I'll, I'll never forget this statement that my friend made uh, in 2011. He said, um, with intimacy, God will use you. Without intimacy, you will be using God. I've, I will never forget that line. And so, you know, I can lead worship with absolute zero intimacy with God. I could have had a week of prayerlessness, haven't touched my Bible, haven't spent uh, time listening to worship songs or spent time worshiping even. But <clears throat> Sunday morning, I can pick up a guitar and start singing and and God might show up. God will show up, not because of that, not because of me, not because that I had any intimate relationship with Him in the past week. But He will show up because He loves people. He wants to come and touch the people's hearts. He wants to heal people. He wants to encounter the congregation of people. And because He loves people, He will show up. And because he showed up, me as a worship leader can think that, okay, God showed up because of me. No, God showed up because of his grace and his mercy. And what am I doing as a, an individual who did not um, spend time with him, reading his word, praying? I am using God. Okay, so I'll say uh, that again, with, with intimacy, with intimacy, God will use you. Without intimacy, you will be using God. Okay, and so um, striving for a godly life, for the life of holiness is very important. Um, the second aspect of that is the spiritual growth. The spiritual growth. There are three areas where we can grow spiritually, right? One is God's word, God's spirit, and our individual area of skill. So you see there's an image there in your notes. If you will, uh, there's an like image of uh, a structure and the foundation at the base of it, you see that uh, the foundation of it is to have a personal, uh, like a, a good testimony, a life of holiness. That is the base. 
being a vessel of honor. And on that foundation, we need we grow, we continue to grow, right? Um, in, in the recent sermon, uh, the last Sunday sermon, we were going through the series uh, of uh, Thessalonians. And in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, we see in one of his verses, uh, it writes that we are to grow in love and grow in faith. Right. Um, so what we experience physically, biologically in our bodies is that we grow, isn't it, from a baby to a, a toddler to a child. Uh, and, you know, so there's a growth, isn't it? And that's the design. The God's design is designed for growth. Everything about God is growth. Everything about God is growth. The way he's designed us, we can learn so much from it. And it's the same thing that applies in our spiritual life. We cannot be content or satisfied at where we are spiritually. We cannot say, yes, you know, five years ago in the youth camp, I gave my life to God and I have done absolutely nothing since then to grow spiritually. Um, that isn't going to work. We are designed to grow. And scripture says, grow in faith, grow in love. Right? At the same time, so we can grow uh, spiritually in, by, in, uh, in, in God's word and, and, and in his Holy Spirit. Right? Um, just, if we can just open up our Bibles and read and read and read and read. Um, and be you know, theologically sound. If not theologically sound, theologically um, might be a too strong a word for those who are not studying theology. But if there are just worship team members in your, you know, uh, in your team uh, who are going about their professional lives, professional careers, uh, teachers, uh, school teachers, or whatever, right? It's important to emphasize the importance of reading the word of God and studying the word of God. As a leader and as a pastor, it is your responsibility to uh, encourage them to spend time in reading and studying the word of God and even teaching them the difference between what is reading the Bible and what is studying the Bible because they are two very different things, right? The um, so Bible was written for me. As in that it was written for me so that I can open up its word and I can read through it and I can I can be strengthened and I can be encouraged. Right? That is reading the Bible, isn't it? I go to the book of Isaiah and say, you know, and just read the read through it and he's speaking to me. And so we see that the word of God was written for us. Right? He will never leave you, not forsake you. Right? He is close to the broken hearted. There's nothing impossible with God. And so when you just read the Bible, it does something to our spirit, isn't it? So the Bible was written for us. However, the Bible was not written to us. The Bible was written to a different set of audience, a different set of recipients. And that is why for us to understand the context, we have to study the Bible. Okay, and so that is growing in God's word and, and leaning into the Holy Spirit um, to asking him to teach us. Uh, he is the one who reveals the word of God to us. He brings it to life. It is the Holy Spirit that uh, if without him, if it is just going to be another historical book, a very good historical book. Right. Um, spending time uh, praying in tongues or growing in the Holy Spirit in different areas of spirit is crucial. And finally, uh, but not the least, is growing in our individual area of skill. Right. Individual area of skill. I need. I don't have to emphasize this, but um, it's self-explanatory. Whatever you're good at, uh, get better at it. Get better at it. Right. Um, so there was a recent study that says that uh, if you clock in, say, 100 hours a year, 100 hours a year, uh, your growth rate uh, in whatever you do, you're, you're going to, you have 95 to 96 percent chances of improving 
So 100 hours a year is approximately, say, 10 to 12 minutes a day. So if you just put 10 minutes or 15 minutes to push yourself, that's 15 minutes to practice or in honing your skill in whatever it is you're good at. So let's just take an example of a, of a month. Okay, one month. And let's consider there are 31 days, 30 days, whatever. Right? If you practice something, for 30 days and every day if you are improving just by one percent if you are getting better only by one percent a day that means at the end of the month you are 31 percent better than where, where you were at the beginning of the month isn't it right i hope you are following what i'm uh saying sharing i hope you're with me but Growing in skill is absolutely crucial. Um, so, you know, I did my, uh, I studied music. Uh, I had the privilege of uh, doing my degree in music. So when I was doing that, you know, the music college had a lot of these small, small cubicles where students can go and practice. A, a keyboard will be set in a small, there's a very small cubicle. Just enough space for the instrument and for an individual, like a small box. Um, you know, my college mates, uh, friends, they would sit in there and practice their piano or singing, what uh, any instrument of their choice for hours. That every day, this is the minimum that they would practice was for two hours. Minimum was two hours. And uh, the most I have heard a person practice is for about eight hours. They would take a short 15 minute coffee break, tea breaks, and just to stretch themselves out. Uh, and uh, and they would just practice, 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 up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, you know, in the world of music, uh, learning a song or a piece, there's a saying that don't learn or don't practice until you, uh, until you can get it right. But practice a piece of music until you can't get it wrong. There's a difference. Right. So some of us, what we tend to do is we learn something until we can get it right. But that means there is still room for mistakes. But we learn a piece of music or a song until we cannot get it wrong. It's impossible for you to get it wrong. That is skill. That is the skill. If you're a videographer or a video editor or a graphic designer, designer, whatever it is, um, there is area of room, you know, for you to grow on your skill. And so that's the spiritual growth. Uh, we're spoken, uh, speaking about godly life, spiritual growth, grow in God's word, his spirit, um, and your skill. Personal life of worship is, again, re-emphasizing that if you are not a worshiper, how can you be a worship leader? Right. If you you need to be a worshiper first yourself, and only then you can you lead people into worship. Truly, yes. Um, you know, there's this passage in Exodus chapter thirty-three where it says Moses took a tent and pitched it outside the camp of Israel, and then after he pitched it, as he as Moses walked in. This, uh, Lord, God came down in the pillar of cloud and there he met with Moses face to face. Now it says, as Moses went into the tent, people of Israel, everybody came out at their tents and they worshipped. They fell face down and they worshipped. Nowhere in the passage you see that Moses took an instrument and encourage them to say, okay, now everybody lift up your hands. We are going to worship. Moses doesn't say that. Moses didn't lead in worship, but he was the lead worshiper. Okay, Moses was a lead worshiper. And so if you are a worshiper, if you are a lead worshiper, people will follow you. You don't have to, you know, keep pushing them to say, lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands. No. Uh, but sometimes we have to do that because it's not always your fault. <laughs> uh, but that's the point, is that you, you cannot lead in worship if you are not a worshiper already. 
right? And you continue to grow in skill and worship and a growing in Christ likeness and serving with humility is crucial. Growing in Christ likeness. If you are growing in Christ likeness, the result of that is humility. John chapter 13. Take a cloth around you, tie it to your waist, and start wiping, every, washing everybody's feet. That's what Jesus did. That is growing in Christ likeness. Is you are ready to serve. You are you you realize that you've been anointed, but anointed to serve. Are you with me? Yeah. So that's one your personal life and testimony uh, in in that. We see we give a lot of emphasis on your skill and your spiritual growth. And at APC, we have a five foundational area of focus. In all of this that we try to emphasize, one is core, character, craft, chemistry, and community. Core, uh, how to truly worship in spirit and truth. That is the core right? character, is you being worshipers for Jesus on and off stage. Right, uh, our conduct as worshippers of Jesus. Character is, uh, you know, how constant is it by your on stage and off stage. Okay, you see the the repetition and the emphasis on this is huge. You cannot be a different person on stage and a completely uh, different person off stage. You can be very nice and you can come across as very nice and holy on stage but and come across as a total jerk off stage, bit arrogant and full of pride. Uh, and you walk around with your, you know, with, with your neck uh, held high, like, yeah, I'm better than all of you, kind of an attitude. That's a very stinking character for any other person to have. Uh, and let me tell you that you do not need a person like that on your worship team. Okay, so the core character, continue working on your craft, music, keep pushing yourself. Uh, chemistry, how we engage each other as a team and the congregation in ministry um, and community. Um, one, one of the things about chemistry, chemistry that I learned when I joined APC's worship team in 2013, uh, so until 2000, 13 uh you know i've been part of a christian band uh and for and uh that's up by then it was almost 12 years uh you know we've been playing together as band you know so it's the same musician uh you know for every concert or a gig as we call it um, so it's the same sort of musician week after week after week that we would meet for practice. And so our chemistry by the end of the 12th year was pretty deep. So I would know what exactly the electric guitarist would do uh, as a drummer. And I would know what exactly um, uh, you know the vocalist would do, what he wanted to do, where he wanted to go without even communicating. So we had a pretty strong chemistry. But when I joined ABC worship team, ABC's worship team, every Sunday I was playing with a different uh, band. Each Sunday, uh, a different person was leading uh, worship. Each Sunday, it's a different uh, bass guitarist or an electric guitarist, different vocalist, and uh, I was, it was it was my nightmare. Like, because okay, you know, I had to learn how a certain worship leader stops the song, starts the song, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, Pastor Jakes would uh, stop the song very differently than another worship leader. Oh, it was an absolute nightmare, and I was I kept con I constantly kept complaining to God, and it's like, Lord, what is this? There's no chemistry. Lord, what do I do? You know. Um, so it, it almost towards the end of that year, um, God again in His grace and His mercy, He asked me a very simple question. Okay, so you are complaining and whining about no chemistry, that you don't have an understanding with the other band members of the worship team. He asked me, what are you going to do about it? Uh, and so in other words, what to make a long story short, what he wanted me to do was not just be reactive, as in don't wait for people to come and talk to me and ask me how I am doing and whatnot, but instead be proactive. That means you take the initiative, you go and speak to people and find out how are they doing, uh, you know, have a chat with them eventually if they are free. Uh, ask them if they would like to catch up for a coffee with them, spend time with them. 
And so at that point of time, everything changed. When, and I joined the team as a drummer. I'm always a drummer. Uh, and I, start, I started being proactive about meeting with the drummers, engaging with them. And slowly, you see that this thing called chemistry changes. Um, right? So it all comes down to being proactive. If you want your if you want your band to be healthy, your team members to be healthy, um, you know, try being proactive. It's a beautiful thing to do in life, and it's connected to every of our, every single relationship in our lives. Uh, you know, for example, um, why should I message uh, him first? Let him message me, then I will message respond. You know, there's a sense of um, that you 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 want to be reactive. And and what happens when you're waiting to be reactive is that you can assume anything you want. They're like, okay, he or she didn't message. Uh, and so maybe because he or, he or she doesn't care. He or she doesn't sit, care, so why should I care? So I'm not going to message. I'm not going to make that phone call. I hope you can relate to what I'm saying, is that many of our relationships can get ruined because uh, we are choosing to be reactive rather than being proactive. Listen, ministry in general is about people, uh, and it's the same with worship ministry. And so we can't afford to be reactive. We cannot afford to be reactive. Uh, that's humility. Being proactive is humble. It's, it's, it's a sign of humility. It's okay if this person doesn't message or call me. I'm going to make that effort. Isn't it? Um, so yeah, that's uh, five foundational areas of focus. And uh, let's look a little bit into how we can learn to flow with the spirit. Flow with the spirit. So uh, again, um, you use that word flow with regards to the water. Isn't it? the water flows? Right, uh, we talk about the, the river flow and the river of life, and the river of God is flowing from His throne. And so, how can we be sensitive to go with that flow? Um, right, so we've broken down into a couple of sections here. So, before worship time, how can you prepare yourself to flow with God? Okay, first point is look at worship as leading people into an encounter with God. Look at that, that 30 minutes, 40 minutes that you might have as a corporate worship, uh, as a corporate time of worship in your church. Look at it as an opportunity to leading people into an encounter with God. And, uh, and look at worship as a time of preparation for what God wants to do in their lives through the word and the ministry of his spirit. So you are really a, a priest in a, in a manner that you are a bridge between heaven and earth. The high priest, so when, I've mentioned this before, when the high priest went into the tabernacle, into the Holy of Holies, when he went in, he represented the people of Israel. Like he would intercede on behalf of Israel for their sin. He would represent them when he went in. But when he came out, he represented God to the people of Israel. He would bring the word from God and he would proclaim it and say, this is what the Lord says. And thus says the Lord. And it's the same thing with us is that we are priests. We, we are like bridges between humanity and divinity. We are leading people into an encounter with God. Right? Moses led the people of Israel in the wilderness to Mount Sinai, and they were having an encounter with God, which scared them. Okay, And so have a theme for your worship time. Listen to the Holy Spirit uh, and see what he has to say, what he wants to do. Uh, you know, we can throw in random songs, God will still move. You can also have a theme for your worship set. Uh, and you know, and that's basically more than having the theme, 
it's not about a theme it's about what the holy spirit what the lord wants to do and in through that session yes it's not just having a theme for the sake of having a theme so then you can you know point of course oh see how wonderful the songs flow between one another it's really about listening and leaning into the heart of god and uh, asking him what do you want to do lord what do you want to do this 30 40 minutes that we have uh, let me say what you want me to say let me sing what you want me to sing that is the that is the heart of it just before worship time right this is how you prepare to flow right um um, understand the different phases of praise and worship, declaration, praise, worship, personal communion, Selah moments, repentance. So those are all things that you go as a worship leader. Uh, you understand these different part, parts, uh, phases of, of leading worship. Uh, when you're sensitive enough, you know that you have to you know, erupt in praise or you will be sensitive to the moment and say, okay, this is a Selah moment. There, let's be still in his presence. Okay, uh, and so as we continue to be sensitive to the move of his spirit, uh, he will tell you what needs to be done. Right, and so uh, you prepare yourself before worship time. With that. And during worship time, there are some points mentioned in your notes. Uh, during the time of worship, don't interrupt the flow by talking unnecessarily. Okay, um, again, a lot of the worship leaders think that they are preachers. Let the preachers do their job and let the worship leader do their, his or her job. Let the worship leader not take on the role of a preacher. They will come later and do the preaching. But here's the thing. And so when I'm not saying exhorting or sharing is wrong, but when that happens constantly, that which is hindering the flow or interrupting the flow, it's absolutely not necessary. Okay, uh, be sensitive to the prophetic. Um, and that again comes with your intimate walk with him, intimate walk with the Lord. Okay, uh, th does anybody have any questions? Are you following what? Uh... Yeah, any thoughts, any questions so far? Okay. So, uh, but, you know, one of the things what will help in um, why why do we emphasize the honing of your skills or growing in your skill uh, is again to be able to flow better with the Holy Spirit. Like for example, so you're in the worship moment and the, and you can hear the Holy Spirit say, or you can feel him saying, okay, uh, sing this song. It could be anything, you know, in moments like these or as the deer, pants for the waters. He might whisper or inspire or put in your heart any song that you want to, that he wants you to sing or declare. And so you can hear him, you're sensitive to his move. But if you, if you, because you didn't practice your instrument well and you're not skilled enough, and because you don't know the chords for that particular song, you, you'll be like, okay, I can't sing that song because I don't know the chords for that song. What just happened? You have stopped. Holy Spirit from moving because of the limitation of your skill. Right? So we grow in skill, not for the sake of growing in skill, so that he can flow through you better. And so when he speaks, you are ready to move. Okay? Um, so that's um, just preparing yourself to flow with this Holy Spirit before worship and during worship time. And uh, one of the aspects is uh, during ministry, during the ministry time, when when pastor or any of you, any of the preacher preachers preaching, uh, how do we support that preacher? Um, right. It's, 
you know, if 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 uh, if a pastor if a pastor after his sermon or before his sermon wants you to do a certain song, uh, you know, you be prepared to do it. And after the sermon, and if he just wants you to support him playing an instrument with uh, uh, with just the piano or whatnot, don't overplay. Uh, less is more is a very famous phrase in the world of music. Less is more. Uh, we need to remember that don't overplay while he's speaking okay god is uh, pastor is speaking about giving up giving your heart surrendering and whatnot. i'm not going to keep going in the piano you know that's going to cause a distraction that's drawing attention to yourself and not being sensitive to what god is doing and so all of that comes with spiritual maturity uh, as a musician as um, as a worshiper etc right and so this um, and you can do all of this in training the team in the prophetic worship you, you, you train your team to move in the prophetic okay so uh, again um, i don't know which page uh, i think page 60 in your notes So prophetic is very simple, God communicating audibly to his people through a person to speak or sing by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. A prediction of discourse of exhortation, edification, or comfort. That's basically what prophecy is. Right? Um, and so uh, a true worship, it says, will prepare our hearts to receive the word of the Lord and allow the flowing forth of gifts of the Spirit. Our true worship will prepare our hearts to receive. Okay, so Acts 13 to verse 2 is simply, simply states that while they were worshiping the Lord, the Holy Spirit came. And uh, Hosea 10 verse 11 says, Judah shall plow. Okay, Russian. <laughs> Judah shall plow. What's the big deal? Right, plowing is related to farming, right? Preparing the land, till, tilling the land, isn't it? And so Judah shall plow, it simply means you prepare the way, you prepare the land with praise. You prepare yourself with praise. And so when he decides to reign, you are ready to receive. Okay, so there are four dimensions of prophecy. Uh, one is prophecy of scripture. Uh, you know, it's a lot of prophecies that have been compiled, compiled in, in the canon of scripture. And um, that's one of the facets of uh, prophecy. Office of a prophet. Now, there is a difference between an office of a prophet and a gift of prophecy, uh, which you, you have already learned in your prophetic course. Right? And so anybody can move in the gift of prophecy, you and me. You know, we are encouraged to do that. And then there are those who are called to the office of a prophet, like an evangelist, right? Uh, or like an evangelist or a teacher or a preacher or a missionary, et cetera, et cetera. So similarly like that, many would be called to a office of a prophet. So that is different. Right? And then there's the spirit of prophecy, uh, which again can move in and through us all. And it is only in, in the tabernacle of David where we see that all of this comes together, right? The worship, word, <laughs> and prophetic comes together in the tabernacle of David. Uh, and so how can you train and equip your team um, you know, to grow in the prophetic? It's again, very simple, intimate relationship with God. It's so basic, isn't it? We make it, we make it so complicated, uh, right? You know, or we, as individuals, uh, we want to move in the prophetic. We want to. Uh, we want this gift of knowledge, uh, God, to flow through us to and give us the word of knowledge and etc. and whatnot. But, but we get very bored of the foundations. We get very bored of the fundamentals. And the fundamental of all of that is your intimate relationship with God. It's as simple as that. How how healthy is it? Everything, I mean, everything flows from the place of intimate relationship with the Lord. Right? Our cup overflows with our intimate relationship with Him. 
intimacy as I, you might have heard me say before is intimacy is if you break it down it simply means into me you see because i show you into me you see because i show you so if if you have an intimate relationship with the lord he's showing himself to you he's revealing himself to you his plans his what he wants to do in that moment or what he wants to do later what he has in store for that person that person he might he might give end up giving you names he might end up giving you phone numbers their addresses their date of birth or whatever the situation that they're going through what is he doing he's revealing himself into me you are seeing because i'm showing it to you right but that's just a basic uh, part of getting to know the Lord or moving in prophetic. It's as simple as that. It's not complicated at all. We humbly go before him and, and hungry and desperate for his presence. We understand his language. We understand what he's, what he's saying. That is intimate relationship with the Lord. You, you grow in that. And then, you know, it automatically is shown in your lifestyle of worship. You thrive for that lifestyle of prayer and fasting and intentional bible study and meditation tell me one of these points of those four points that's in your notes tell me one of it which is new to you it's the same thing you would have heard before so many many times but to move and grow as a pro as a worshiper and in prophetic and in all the different areas of ministry and in your life it's very simple intimate relationship with the lord intentional bible study and meditation prayer life is very crucial right prayerlessness what one of the things that prayerlessness does is lack it causes lack bible says you have not because you ask not but you have not because you ask not. And, and prayerlessness see each and every one of us are, are prone to temptation because we live in this body, flesh, and we live in this world. But it is the prayerlessness that, that causes you to fall into the trap of temptation. And when you live a life of prayer, no matter what temptation come, you overcome it. Isn't it? Now we see that about Jesus. The Bible says that he was tempted in every way, yet he overcame. Why? Because Jesus was a man of prayer. He is the son of God. He didn't need to pray. But he had that intimate relationship with the Lord uh, so intimately that God did signs and wonders through his own son. Okay, so uh, this is this is chapter 5. Uh, the spiritual aspect of worship ministry is pretty fundamental, but very, very important for the health of your worship ministry. Okay, um, and I hope you were able to follow and understand everything that was shared during this session. We pause here, we take a break, and we come back to our next session. Right. Thank you.